In this video, I'm going to tell you how to create panoramic photos the correct way. So grab yourself some popcorns and let's go. So you wouldn't have clicked on this video if you didn't know a little bit about what a panoramic photo is. But just in case that you don't know, usually when people talk about a panoramic photograph, it is multiple photos stitched together in order to expand the photo. This is mostly used in landscape photography. And usually the three first thing you learn about a panorama is number one, shoot it on a tripod. And number two, shoot in manual mode. And number three, to overlap your photos. And the reason why you're being told to shoot on a tripod is to make sure that the camera stays in the same position so you don't get any weird perspective change by moving the camera around by shooting handheld. Shooting in manual mode is usually because we don't want to change the focus at any point. We don't want to change the exposure of the image. We want to keep all the photos as even as possible. And the reason why we want to overlap the photos is to make it easier for us to stitch them together in Photoshop. It's much easier for the computer to stitch something together if it has some reference where things belong compared to each other. And if you don't overlap your photos, you run the risk of having the computer not able to stitch them together. Sometimes when you're out shooting a landscape, your focal length is just not enough. Sometimes you just need to take multiple photos in order to capture the whole image. For instance, when I was in Rome, I was shooting a photo of the Colosseum, and I only had my travel lens, which is only an 18 to 105 millimeter lens. And on my crop sensor camera, that meant that I couldn't get far enough back in order to capture the whole Colosseum in one shot. And that meant that I had to do a panorama. I captured 12 photos in order to get this shot, three for the bottom, three for the middle, and three for the top. But to do a panorama correctly, there's a few things that you need to know. Firstly, you don't shoot your photos like this. Even if you overlap your photos by 20%, you still run the risk of having some parallax in your photos. And if you don't know what that is, simply extend one arm in front of you and have the other hand behind, and then you can move your head from side to side. This will show you that your closest hand will move much faster back and forth than the hand behind, and even the background behind that. To just show off the parallax effect a little more, I took this shot right here. As you can see, with the camera straight in the middle, you can't see the object behind. But as soon as you start sliding the camera from side to side, you can see the object behind. And this is what I was trying to explain. But the further an object is away from the camera, the slower it moves compared to the camera. But usually this is only a problem when you have something with depth in the image. So if you have something in the foreground, midground, and background, if you're only doing a panorama of a lot of mountains, then you shouldn't see any problem at all. However, it's a bit more tricky when you're doing stuff like this, since you have the foreground element as well. So if you have the parallax effect, it might mess up your image or even make your program say, I can't do it. And the reason why this happens when you're shooting like this, that's because the point of rotation is set at the center of your camera or at the center, as you would think, since that's where the light hits. But that's actually not the case. From the moment that the light hits the tip of your lens, that's actually where the image is shaped. The rest of the lens is actually only there to shape the light, to hit the sensor correctly in order to capture the focal length that you have, as well as the focus point you have set. So what you have to do instead is to center your point of rotation at the tip of your lens, so something like this. That way you will get the least amount of parallax in your shot. All right, so let's just slow this down. If I take you back to the experiment we did earlier, and we said rotate the camera around, as you can see, when the point of rotation is at the center, which you can see by looking at the spot right here, we still get the parallax effect. When I twist the camera, you can see the object behind the first one, which we couldn't if we just looked straight. Now, if we move the point of rotation to the front of the lens, what you can see now is that we don't have any parallax effect. No matter how much I rotate the camera, you're not able to see the object behind the first one because the light does not reach around. And this way, we don't get any parallax effect at all. All right, so now you know what to do, but how do you do it? Well, the cheaper way to do this is just to use your own tripod like this, or grab yourself a monopod like this. And the trick to use either of these is not to screw it onto your camera, but instead use as a guide to move your camera around without moving the tip of your lens too much. I have nothing to add. And to show you how to do it, I found this tree out in the water. And I'm looking through my lens. I am not able to capture the whole thing out in the water, which means that I have to take multiple photos here to create the panorama and stack them in post. But since I have something so close to me, if I just took the photos and moved the camera like this, there would be multiple points on the tree in the photo that would not line up completely, which means that I would get maybe a bad photo, maybe even a useless photo. So what you want to do in order to do this, 
is to have the most stable base you can. For that, I would recommend using a tripod, but I'm gonna show you how to do it with the monopod here. This monopod is really nice because I got this. This is just a pointed tip that I can stick down into the ground in order to not have it move too much. It's also important that I don't move the top of the stick much since that is gonna change where my lens is gonna be in 3D space. What I'm gonna do here is just, it's gonna make sure that I have my settings correct. I'm gonna plant this down in the ground here, nice and firm. Then I'm gonna set my camera on top, something like this. And then I'm just gonna take multiple photos back and forth here, trying to only move the back of the lens. There we go. This way you should have a much better chance of getting a successful panorama. And as you can see right here, this is the shot I got. It is by no means perfect, but that's mostly because of the composition. There's no parallaxation and I had no problem stacking this at all, which is the point of the whole video. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you're also interested to know how to do a handheld photo stack, click this video up here. Now I'm going to enjoy my popcorn.